It's been several days since the shooting in Oregon, and so now I've had some time to sort of process the experience, my thoughts about it, the news that's been coming out ever since, and I have something depressing that I want to talk about with you today, and that's that we will almost certainly have a lot more massacres of this sort, and not just in the short term. I'm not just saying that, you know, until we have time to fix our laws, we'll have more of these sorts of massacres. I think that America, for decades at the very least, will have this situation repeated every couple of weeks at a school, every couple of days somewhere in the country. And the fundamental reason is this. Gun owners, the people, the true gun nuts, those who immediately start the conversation of they're going to take away our guns in the wake of one of these tragedies, do not care about the victims of these tragedies. And I don't mean 100% they don't care. But I mean they don't care the way they think they do, and they don't care the way the popular culture talks about it as if they do. And here's why I say that. Because I'm not just talking about gun owners. I'm saying people who really care about their guns, who do a lot of research and do a lot of purchasing, and they hoard guns and they hoard ammunition, and they're, they're involved with the NRA, and they're really worried about every Democratic politician taking their guns, despite the fact that, I don't even, can you name a single Democrat who's actually calling for all guns to be taken away. Doesn't matter, they're all trying to take your guns. Barack Obama, who has done almost literally nothing to rein in gun violence, he's trying to take away your guns. That's what they say. I'm talking about that person. That person is not like other people. They're not like other Americans. It's not just, oh, you roll a dice, and if you get a one when you're born, you're gonna be a gun nut. No, it's tied in with other things. And I think that those things implicitly make it so that you will not care about strangers who you've never met dying. Even if it's as a result of somebody living the sort of lifestyle that you live, getting a little bit crazy and then going off and shooting a bunch of people. Now, for me, I'm assuming for you, for most Americans, when we hear about the shooting at Oregon or any of these other shootings, we immediately think about a couple of different things. We think about the family. We think about them finding out about the shooting, about perhaps trying to call because they don't know who the victims are and they're trying to get in contact with anyone that they can to find out if the person is still alive. And we think about the last moments of the victims, of what they went through, hearing the shooting, hoping that the person wouldn't come into their building, into their room, and then facing down the killer and dying. And we think about that, and it just, it, it takes, like I was, on, I was on The Young Turks on Thursday, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't focus on any of those stories because I'm thinking about that because we put ourselves in the places of their friends, their family, and themselves in their last minutes. And we don't want anyone to go through that. That's what we're thinking about. It's not that underneath political concerns. If we have political concerns, it's to stop that from happening. But that is not fundamentally how everyone approaches this. That's not what everybody thinks about. Some people here shooting at Oregon School and think, I should probably go buy another AR because they might make it illegal. I should probably get one right now. Or, you know, uh, well, what if ammunition gets harder to, to get? I should probably go out right now before they, before they rain in the ammunition. I should probably get as much ammunition as I can. And they, they, they go to the INRA website and they tune into Fox News to find out about, oh, Obama's politicizing it. Those are their thoughts. It's their fear of losing the thing that they love most in this world. They're completely unrestricted access to whatever guns they want, effectively. That's what they think about. Now, if they think about the victims, do they feel bad for them? Sure, of course they do. But all of that is underneath their concerns over keeping their own guns. I mean, you hear it when they talk about the issue that it doesn't matter. And think about what leads you to want all of those guns. It is a, a suspicion of, a fear of other people, thinking that people that you don't know, your immediate family, your immediate friends, are naturally suspect naturally dangerous, and you need to protect yourself at all costs, regardless of what all the stats say about how having guns in your house actually makes you more likely to die as a result of gun violence than, than not having the gun, how you're actually making it more likely that you will die. It's their fear of the outside world, that not even in their own, just in their own home, they need to have a gun with them everywhere they go, because all those people around us that you and I just see as people, they see as threats. Now, do they think consciously that all of the people at Oregon who died are threats, are complete strangers, are, are potentially uh, people that they need to watch out for? Perhaps not, but they're strangers and they don't see strangers the same way that we do. Is it any wonder that they, they find Donald Trump so, so, such an amazing, perfect candidate? When he says everybody you don't like in the world, the Mexicans, the gays, 
uh, Muslims, Syrians, they're all bad people. We need to stop them from getting in. It's this natural suspicion of the people around you. And there is, I'm sure, some kernel of empathy at, this, at the heart of that. But it all comes after their emotional distaste at strangers, their fear of strangers, their suspicion of, of strangers, and their desperate fear to save their own guns. That they say that the guns are to protect themselves and their families, but then they're willing to die to protect their guns. And so it seems like the guns are simply there to protect their guns. And that seems ridiculous, but we see it every single day. And because of that, because these people are 20% or 25% or 30% of the population, they're not all gun owners. They're the, the crazy gun owners. But they have enough sway over the NRA and their money and enough sway over congressmen and potentially in a few states in the presidential election that so long as they don't care, so long as they love their guns more than they love the victims of gun violence, nothing will be done. We'll have other videos where we get into what should be done, but nothing will be done because they don't care. They're willing to live in this world where people routinely are killed because of the access to the things that they love so much. And there's no change small enough that it's acceptable if it would even theoretically infringe on their ability to get those guns in the future. I'm sorry, I, I mean, I've been thinking about this for a few days now, and I said on the show that it, it's this feeling of weakness to know that as hard as it is to convince people of other policies, of whether we should have electric cars or, you know, what subsidies should be given to which, like all of that stuff, it's so hard to convince people of that stuff. But to know that in an issue that is even more pressing every single day, that has a literal toll in lives every single day, that there is nothing you can do. Because those people are not simply waiting for the information. They're not waiting to find out these stats or the charts of, you know, how much more risk they're putting themselves at. They don't care about that stuff. Because all of the claims that they make of why they want the guns are utter BS at the end of the day. They want the guns because they're guns. They want the guns because the guns represent the ability to take a person's life. And they can see a lot of situations in which they desperately need to take a person's life. And they live based on those fantasies. And those fantasies get real people killed. Not hypothetical people, not fantastical people. Real people every single day in cities across America. And there's nothing that I can do about it. There's nothing that any of us in the media can do about it because those people don't fucking care. And that's why we are not just in the near term, but off into the future, years and decades from now, until something fundamental changes. Those people die off, or gun owners get massacred. I don't want that to happen, but perhaps then it would make it a little bit real to them. That is the only thing that is going to change it, and it's not coming soon. And so this is depressing, but that's all I have to say at this point.